Hey there, I hope you're doing wonderful. My name is Nates, and if you need some help with your storyline project, a bug, challenge, just something to check or brainstorm, go over to storyaudit.eu and let's connect and we'll solve your problem. Let's continue with our part two of the 360 car rotation. So if you haven't seen the first one, there'll be a link somewhere down below. But to recap quickly, how I'm achieving this 360 effect is by using a huge slider. I can show it too quickly here. It's like that, which user drags around and then it changes the other slider, which changes all the states of the car and you get a 360 effect. Now, where we left off the last time was how am I achieving the rotation when you go from one direction or the other direction. So when you're dragging a slider up and down, you're of course changing value, value, uh, no, values, values, not variables, values, because that's a variable and you change its values. So when you go up and down, how do you know if it's going to the right or to the left? And how do you track that? And how then you can change this and use this information to change the states. What you have to do is follow what the previous value was. So if you're dragging to the right, numbers go up. So it's one, two, three, four, five, which means if it's five now and it was four earlier, means the numbers go up. And if it's vice versa, the numbers are going down. But how do you do that? So here's a few more triggers that we will take a closer look. So what we're doing here is every time the slider has been dragged, has, has been changed, the value has changed, I'm setting variable two to the uh, value of the variable one, and then I'm setting the variable one to the value of the slider. And now, you know, when this happens many times, um, especially after the first move, the first move is nothing, but user can't tell that. The first move is nothing because this is all zero, and then this gets a value, and then we have some more information. So when there's more data here, we actually have information to see if the va variable one was bigger than variable two, which means we're dragging to the right. And in that case, we want to change uh, the value of the car to one. So we're adding one because we're dragging r to the right, which is like up, and we're subtracting value one if variable two is bigger, because that means we're dragging to the left. So let me enable these uh, values here, these variables, and let's preview. And I hope then this makes much more sense than my theory. So first I'll click and drag to the left once. So you can see the car is one, Variable 1 is 40 because the slider is 40, but variable 2 is still 0 because this is now the first time the trigger is executed. So variable 2 is still 0 because variable 1 was 0 when we you know, set the trigger that they make it equal. But when I move it again, you can see the variable 1 is 39 because that's the slider, but variable 2 is now 40 because that was the previous value of variable 1. And then if I go in the other direction, you know, this is repeated. And we're basically, when we're looking at these changes up or down, that's where we're changing the uh, value of the car variable. And that's how you get this smooth movement up and down by one value. So that is the main trick here. You're looking at the differences by applying an order of triggers like this. So first two is equal to one, one is equal to slider. And when this, this, this keeps repeating, you get the difference. And then because you know the difference, you know what to do with the value. You add one to the car. If this is bigger, you add, you subtract one from the car. If this, the number two is bigger. And then I have just two more triggers to help with everything. I tried to disable this to see if maybe it works, but it doesn't. Um, so actually when it gets, when the value car gets to one, um, 
actually when it gets to 37 because that's not a that's not a um, that's not the state that we have here available you know it's just 36 when it gets to one uh, when it gets to 37 it jumps to one so basically 37 is then immediately one so we get 35 36 one there's no 37 so there's no break when you're dragging it and when it's zero it jumps back to the end it jumps to 36. so these are two more triggers needed to make the whole thing smooth as butter so i can try this again you can look at the values and variables again so we're dragging this around looking at the differences between variable one and two adding or subtracting value one from the car and everything is copacetic there we go this concludes our 360 car rotation video if you want to help with your project jump over to storyaudit.eu or connect with me on linkedin and we can get the ball rolling have a great day everyone and i'll talk to you in the next video